Jessica, who's been watching what's going on with the weather here and also what's barreling towards Southern California, helping people get ready. Absolutely, Reid. And Gianna, I'm giving you a hug right after I get done with this hit, by the way. That story meant so much to me, too, watching it. Let's take a quick look at our satellite imagery. It's as though you can't not just stare directly at your screen at that hurricane, right? This hurricane has a lot of people's attention here in California, and we're going to talk all about it in just a second. But let's start off with current conditions here in the Bay. We are still dealing with some leftovers from Tropical Storm Eugene. 60s in the forecast right now for us as we wake up and head out the door this morning. 60s still this afternoon along our coast as we head into our daytime highs. 80s for our friends in the Santa Clara Valley, 80s and even some 90s trickled in the forecast over near Brentwood later into this afternoon. It's been a long week for many of us heading back to school, getting back to those normal schedules. And here's the best part. The weather is cooperating with us for our Friday forecast. So if you want to get out and get some fresh air today, maybe tomorrow head out to the 49ers game. We are expecting a beautiful weekend ahead of us. 80s tomorrow for that game. We're expecting 60s for our friends heading out to Stern Grove Reed on Sunday. <laughs> It's going to be beautiful, partly cloudy, 60s in sight. You can probably get away with a couple layers and then shed them as we head into the afternoon hours. But let's get right back into Hurricane Hillary. The National Hurricane Center updates their track every six hours. And boy, have I been keeping a very close eye on this system. This is going to break. I mean, this is going to be monumental in a lot of ways, just because the last time we saw something like this make its way into California, it was 1939, and it was a tropical storm by the time it hit California. We're seeing that track actually right now. It's at 145 miles per hour as it continues to track its way north. It's going to lose a lot of its energy, though. This is the current track right now. By the time it hits San Diego area, it's expected to be around 60 miles per hour. It loses a lot of its energy. You want to know why? There's three things that decay a hurricane. Sea surface temperature, which it cools down a lot as it makes its way into our California coastline wind shear at the vertical level, and last but not least, landfall. That's going to decay that really fast, but we're still going to get a lot of leftovers from this storm as it continues to track north, closer to the Sierra Tahoe area as of now. It's leaning a lot more to the east. So what does that do for us? Well, take a look at Futurecast. Partly cloudy skies for now. Look at that just here today, tomorrow, and into the next couple days. And then suddenly, Saturday into Sunday, as we watch this really advance its way into northern Cal or into the northern, excuse me, I can't even speak right now, into northern California and Nevada. That's it's going to continue to track off into the east, allowing for a lot of heavy storms down to the south. Flash flooding is definitely possible for areas like Las Vegas, my hometown, L.A., all throughout Southern California. We're keeping a very close eye on how that's going to impact them. But back here in the bay, as it continues to track off into the east, that's allowing for just partly cloudy skies in our forecast as of now heading into next week. Don't get me wrong. It's still teetering back and forth, that cone, as it moves its way north. But as of now, heading into the next seven days, we are spared here in the bay area when it comes to any devastation with this heavy storm that's still developing. We're going to have more on that and how that's going to impact Southern California in a bit. For now, we'll be UG.